Oh joy. Looks like we're going to have to talk about this again. And there was me hoping we could stick to doing videos about positive things for a while. Oi! Shut it, Gandalf! I mean, we were supposed to be starting the new year with a Bloodborne video right now, but no! The universe has seemingly decreed that we can't have nice things, so we're gonna have to do this dance again. Just over a year ago, we did a video about some of the wankier bits of the video game industry. You know, things like games being punted out unfinished, studios lying about features being in their games, content being cut to sell to people as DLC. Well, you get the point. It was, in essence, a video about fuckery within the gaming industry. That's a topic we've covered a few times, but amazingly, we've managed to avoid talking about it for a year, and if I'm honest, it was kinda nice to not see something that'd piss me off every other day. Well, that changes now, because oh look, more fuckery is afoot! Yep, it's sequel time, bitches. When are you ever not angry? Besides, this video is going to have a happy ending, so there's that to look forward to. Go on, think. You know what I'm talking about. Indeed. And we'll start with an old friend. Hi Bethesda! Can you guess why we're going to yell at you today? Tough. You already said yes. No tape box. So Fallout 76, eh? Uh, what epic clusterfuck that's turned out to be. You know, we nearly did a video about it back when it was first unveiled, but we decided not to, for two reasons. Firstly, well, to be honest, neither of us could be asked. I mean, what was there to say, really? Bethesda teased the new Fallout game in the run-up to E3 and got everyone excited, and then unveiled a Rust clone with Fallout written on its forehead in crayon. So we said fuck it, knocked off early, and went to the chipper. So that was reason one. Reason two was simple. We both realised that if we waited until the game actually went on sale, we could talk about all the extra fuckery that happened. Yep, that's definitely why this video took two months to make, and not because we were sat on our asses playing Warframe over Christmas instead of working. Oi, piss off, I was farming you a Mesa Prime for Christmas and a fucking Chroma Prime, you ungrateful swine. Anyway, yes, look, we waited for extra fuckery to happen, okay? Aha. And oh blimey, we were not disappointed. Now let's start with the obvious. Fallout 76 is buggy as fuck and barely finished. We're not complaining about that though because it's a Bethesda game, so that was always going to be the case. Seriously, you tell me one Bethesda game that wasn't riddled with bugs at launch. See? You can't, can you? So, while we're not complaining about it being a bug fest, it is a problem for the game, and again, it's for two reasons. Firstly, Bethesda was aiming this at a new market, as lots of people have already said, and that's an issue because unlike Bethesda fans, they quite often expect their games to work properly when they buy them. They don't expect to buy something that needs to be modded to get the best out of it, and that leads on to reason two. You see, Bethesda games have had a free pass before precisely because of the massive modding community around them. Take Fallout 4 for instance, Subtitle Guy has about 130 mods running when he plays it, and the whole reason people give Bethesda some slack is because their games are single player 
and easily moddable. And there's the issue, because Fallout 76 isn't a single player game, it's always online multiplayer, and that means we won't be seeing the likes of CBBE, or Fallout 4 Frost, or any of the other mods that make Bethesda games worth buying. It's going to be locked down so that people can't mod it. Well, I say that, but we all know it uses the same engine from Fallout 4, with the Quake netcode glued onto it, so it's actually piss easy to mod, and in fact, it already has been. Yeah, cheats out the arse. No one expected that to happen, right? The issue is, as I said, that it uses the same engine used by Fallout 4, which was the same engine used by Skyrim, which was the same engine used by Fallout 3, and New Vegas, which was the same engine used by Oblivion, which was... and so on and so forth. Basically, that engine is now old enough to legally drink and drive a car, and fuck me does it show. You can almost hear the poor thing creaking as it tries to run Fallout 76. That's what causes 90% of the technical problems with the game as well. Like, say, the inventory stash being limited to 400 pounds of weight. And yes, I know they've updated it to be 600 pounds, but in the patch notes, they also said that before it could go any higher, they needed to make sure it won't cause any negative issues. Yeah. Really think about that, adding inventory space could break the game, that is not a healthy situation. But that's just the technical issues, we haven't even got onto the content yet. You know what, I'm not even going to go on a long rant, I am going to make this section longer though, so we're going to have to drop the section we were going to include about Diablo Immortal, and the whole clusterfuck that that spawned. You all know about that situation anyway. Blizzard got people all excited and then announced the mobile Diablo game and talked down to their fans. And then the entire internet lost its shit. Then the internet lost even more of its shit when Blizzard said all their IPs would be going mobile. And basically, people are not best pleased with Activision. Anyway, yes. Back to Fallout 76, because I'm forced to ask a somewhat important question. Who is this game actually for? I find it very hard to believe it's for Fallout fans, considering that they've taken all the human NPCs out of the game, along with all the RPG elements. Oh, and they've retconned an ungodly amount of fucking lore too, so that no super mutants were a pre-war creation made by West Tech when they dumped FEV into the water supply of Huntersville, West Virginia. Oh, and there's the nonsense about the Broho being in West Virginia, which is canonically bollocks, but are we even surprised at this point? So the point is that Fallout 76, with its lack of RPG mechanics or interesting characters, and its piss poor writing, doesn't particularly seem like a game for Fallout fans, despite what some Fallout fans on say YouTube might tell you. Not that we're saying we can't trust them to be impartial after Bethesda flew them out to the real West Virginia and plied them with freebies. Of course, I'm just saying that if they'd flown us out to America to play it and thrown armfuls of free shit at us, then you could be damn sure we'd be treating the game more favourably than if they hadn't. Fortunately, it's unlikely to ever come up since we're not... influencers. So it must be for fans of PvP survival games like Ark and Rust then, right? You know, so that Bethesda can get them as customers too. Well hang on now Chief, hold your horses though, because it does a shit job in that regard too! That seems to be the biggest complaint from people who play stuff like Rust. The PvP is consensual. You can't just walk up and shoot someone in the back of the head, then nick all of their stuff. They actually have to fight back for the PvP to be on like Donkey Kong, and they can always turn on the pacifist mode and never have to engage in PvP at all. Nope. It's complete bollocks, because yet again Bethesda fucked up. 
You see, while it's true that the PvP isn't officially on unless you fight back, the tit who's taking random pot shots at you will still do chip damage, and Bethesda forgot to take into account the fact that people will be quite prepared to follow you around doing chip damage for 10 minutes and kill you that way. But what about pacifist mode? Surely pacifist mode stops that from happening, right? Does it bollocks? You still take chip damage even then. The only difference is that you now can't fight back because you're a pacifist, so you can't do damage to other players. And then there's the writing. We mentioned in a previous video how the Fallout games are very good at telling stories through the environment, and to give Fallout 76 its due, it does do that. The trouble is, that's all it does. You see, there's a rule in the visual arts. Sure, don't tell. Don't tell the audience what happened. Show them it actually happening. By the very nature of environmental storytelling, it's not doing that. It's telling the viewer about something that happened in an indirect way instead of actually showing it. And that's fine and everything, but if it's the only way your story based game is telling a story, then it's going to wear thin very fucking quickly. Can you guess what kind of storytelling Fallout 76 does for 99% of the game? Yeah. Anyway, basically, the game itself is bad. No, we're not saying you can't enjoy it or have fun with it because it's perfectly possible to enjoy bad things. But it's not a good game. It's too broken, there's too much fuckery going on in it, and the whole thing feels like Bethesda took a bad idea, handed it to the new studio in Austin who didn't know what they were doing with the IP, and then made them rush it to meet a deadline. The result is a game that, in my opinion, looks like absolute dog shit, which is why we're using footage of New Vegas in this video instead. What? Did you think I'd even play it, let alone buy the damn thing? No chance, mate. So yeah, it's a bad game. But if it was just a case of it being a bad game, we wouldn't be making a video about it. Because of subtitle guys, bad game CBA protocol. But it's not just a bad game. It's also a game surrounded by the stench of publisher bullshit, as you may have guessed when we talked about influencers. It's time to talk about Bethesda's business tactics, because those are what transformed Fallout 76 from being merely bad to being utterly cancerous. Yes, we're talking about the thing everyone is talking about, that fucking bag in the special edition and the issue of whether Bethesda engaged in false advertising, because if they did, that's not just unethical, it's flat out sodding illegal. Sadly, it's hard to believe they didn't, because people grabbed archives of the sales page, and those archives show that the sales page for the special edition listed it as including a canvas bag. And as you should know by now, it bloody well did not include a canvas bag, since they stuck a vastly cheaper nylon bag in there instead. Of the types used mainly by grannies when they go shopping at B&M. That's bad enough though, but Bethesda compounded the fuckery by offering disgruntled customers $5 in compensation. Well, except it wasn't $5, it was $5 worth of in-game currency. And that's properly taking the piss, that is. I'm not even sure that fits any definition of the word compensation, but hey, a lot of people have pointed out that they only did it so the people who agreed to it waived their rights to sue them. So, you know, mission accomplished, I guess. I mean, it's probably not surprising they tried this tactic, since it prompted a class action lawsuit against them because of that bag. Naturally, You've also got people taking the piss out of pain customers getting angry over a bag, seemingly without realising that they're defending business practices that are at best shady and, depending on the ruling of the lawsuit, potentially flat out illegal. Oh, and to add insult to injury, do you know who did get a good bag? 
those influencers again. The ones whose opinion we really can't trust because Bethesda flew them out to the Greenbriars Resort in West Virginia to wine them and dine them and make them say nice things about the game like they were part of some sales focused version of the fucking Borg Collective. I'm not kidding, we sat down and tried to work out how much that event must have cost Bethesda based on how much a night at Greenbriars costs. Yes, fine. Subtitle guy sat and worked it out, but the point is that it must have cost Bethesda well into six figures to put that shindig on, yet they can't even pony up a penny in real world money to please their paying fucking customers. That's taking the piss. Mind you, it backfired, since a lot of those influencers are also saying that Fallout 76 is a bag of shit, which in hindsight is probably why it got a big discount around the Black Friday sales, a mere two weeks after launch. It's just a shame that Bethesda, well, Bethesda's lawyers really, decided to do the right thing and sought out replacement bags for people who bought the Power Armor Edition. Or rather, it would have been a shame, if not for the fact that the comedy continues because the online form that people have to use to claim their replacement bag is at the time of writing, NOT FUCKING WORKING! And do you know what else? We've had to add another editing to the script right here, because even that wasn't the end of it. Yes, now that online form has turned out to be so fucked that it's exposing customers' personal details, including their card details to randoms. Yes, it was sending the support tickets with the customers' details to players instead of Bethesda staff. Oh, and back in the game itself, there was the patch to remove some bugs that actually added in new, exciting, never-before-seen bugs. Good fucking lord, how is it even possible to fuck up this badly? Basically, what I'm saying is... Oh for god's sake, what no? The game's been out nearly two fucking months, what else could they have possibly balls up? Oh yes! The thing we had precisely zero faith in because good alcohol takes a fucking shed load of time and effort to get right, as you told me because you used to work for a beer wholesaler. Please don't have a flashback. Just tell us what's wrong with the rum. Oh! So it's the next Tide Pods crate then. Yeah, basically who knew a game could... Oh for the love of god, are you taking the piss? Go on. What like, with every item in the game? You know what, I'm not even surprised at this point. Who knew a game could be this entertaining without even buying it? No. Granted, it's funny to see such epic levels of hubris get thoroughly punctured, much like it's deeply satisfying to see Battlefield 5 doing so badly that it also got discounted not long after launch, to the point where EA are so desperate for sales that they're giving away a free 7 day trial to people. But while it's funny, it's also deeply distressing that this is what the video game industry's come to. Surely there must be some good developers out there. Well, yes. Yes there are. Although it might surprise you to learn who they are. That's because this next section is a direct sequel to one particular bit in that video we mentioned at the start. Specifically, the bit where we rip the piss out of No Man's Sky. You see, it too was an unfinished bag of donkey dongs at launch, and then a few days later, developer Hello Games went into lockdown. No press appearances, no media spin, they just went quiet, leading a hell of a lot of people to assume that they were in the process of going bankrupt. 
but they were they were doing something almost unheard of in the modern games industry. We know now that what Hello Games and lead dev Sean Murray were doing was actually reading the feedback, realising how they'd fucked up, and then, most importantly, knuckling down to actually fix it. The end result, and I never thought I'd be here saying this, is that No Man's Sky is, as of right now, actually pretty good. And unbelievably, it got even better recently when the new update added underwater exploration and submarines. I'm still ever so slightly in awe of the fact that Hello Games managed to turn this thing around and make it genuinely good. That's a redemption arc up there with fucking Heracles that is. Never mind the phoenix rising from the ashes, that's almost as big a comeback as Jesus of Sodding Nazareth. It takes a lot of guts to admit when you're wrong, and since Hello Games did exactly that, the main subtitle guy can't do any less. We were wrong about you, Hello Games. You proved us wrong, to the point where subtitle guy now has the game on his Steam wishlist. We can respect that, so keep on doing what you're doing and make No Man's Sky a massive success, because as of right now, you deserve it. So yes. That's a surprising one. There's another developer we want to focus on now, because this video really needs a happy ending. But before you all sit there getting all smug because you know which dev we mean, no, you're wrong. It's not CD Projekt Red. We pounded that drum hard enough in the previous video. Today though, we're picking someone else. You see, if we're talking about good developers, then there's absolutely no way we can avoid talking about Digital Extremes, a studio that began life working on Unreal Tournament, before going on to do the multiplayer in Bioshock 2, and then becoming known for making a free-to-play indie game that makes full-price games look bad. That game is, of course, Warframe. It's the spiritual successor to Dark Sector, and it might just hold the record for the greatest achievement in video game history. It's an online multiplayer game that Subtitle Guy, the man who hates both online games and multiplayer, absolutely fucking adores. That in itself is one hell of an achievement but it also holds the record for the game that's most often described using the phrase HOW THE FUCK IS THIS GAME FREE? We weren't kidding when we said this is the free to play game that makes full price titles look bad. It's an astonishing game at every single level, with fantastic gameplay, a hugely compelling story, a level of polish that puts AAA titles to shame, utterly fucking phenomenal music, and possibly the nicest community I've ever seen in any online game ever. We're not going to verbally suck the game off here though, because you'd better fucking believe we're doing a Cracks 1 out video on it one day, so that we can go into detail on both the good and bad bits, because obviously it's not 100% perfect, but then, you tell me one game that is. No, we're here to talk about the developers in this video, so instead we're going to focus on Digital Extremes themselves, who may well be one of the absolute best studios in the business. Why? Because they understand the truth that the Bethesdas and the EAs and the Activisions of the world have forgotten. Do not focus on milking profits out of your customers. Instead, focus on making the best product you can and treat your customers right, and then your customers will want to keep giving you money. Look at Subtitle Guy for instance, he's been playing about two months at this point and he's dropped actual money on the game to buy some platinum and some of the player made Tenogen skins. Digital Extremes remember that we, as their customers, pay their wages. As Steve Sinclair, the director of Warframe said, We owe you everything! Digital Extremes puts their fans, their customers, above everything else. And believe it or not, we actually have a direct example of that happening. You see, back in the day they included an option to randomise the colours of any Kubra you breed by paying Platinum. Except one guy then spent $200 doing just that, 
and Digital Extremes realised that they had accidentally created a loot box system in the game. So what did they do? They patched the fucker out. That's what? That's something that the EAs and the Activisions of this world would never ever do. And it's things like that which have made Warframe's fanbase so loyal. It also made that fanbase quite big. Because as of March 2018, Warframe has 38 million registered players across all four major platforms. And still to this day, Digital Extremes keeps pumping out massive expansions for free to keep that fanbase happy. We're currently playing through the Fortuna update, but the next one looks utterly jaw-dropping because we're getting actual full-on multi-crew gunships that we can pilot with our friends for free. That's unheard of in this day and age, but the fact is that it only happens because Digital Extremes makes enough money to do it, and that only happens because they found the perfect formula to make people want to give them money. Let's close out this section by considering the phrase the customer is king, which is summed up by Urban Dictionary as a corporate cliché meaning that the direction of a business is ultimately determined by its customers. The business is compelled to sell products and services that customers want, need, at a price they are willing to pay, and provide an acceptable level of service, otherwise customers will look elsewhere and they will not make money. In a world where the likes of Bethesda can't even manage to fulfil that definition, it's nice to see a developer that doesn't just do the minimum they need to do to keep their customers, but actually goes above and beyond to make them happy. Or to put it another way, it takes a lot to impress Subtitle Guy, because he's a jaded, cynical, black-hearted, miserable old bastard, and yet Digital Extremes did exactly that. Long may it continue. So, what have we learned? Well, we've learned that Bethesda are completely taking the piss, and it's a fucking tragedy, because me and Subtitle Guy both love the Fallout games. I'd say we both love the Elder Scrolls too, but he's only played Skyrim, so in no way is he qualified to have an opinion on them. We've also learned that no matter how big you are, you are never too big to fail, especially if your game's bloody awful. If you tell your customers not to buy your game, or if you move all your games over to mobile phones while insulting your customers. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that all have phones, phone, right? We've also learned that redemption is possible, but it takes real strength of character to admit your mistake and do what needs to be done in order to earn that redemption. And finally, we've learned that despite all the bullshit, there is hope for the world of gaming, because we've learned that there is a studio who understand that if you treat your customers right, you'll have a game that can make enough profit to keep growing and evolving five years after launch. And most of all, thanks to the likes of Hello Games and Digital Extremes, we've learned that no matter how bad the industry gets, there is still hope. Alright, fine. Yes, it's mostly still shit, but at least there's some hope, right? No, I thought I told you no Gandalf impressions. Only if you stop saying I can't aim. You can make it your New Year's resolution. Thank you. And I'll stop calling you Gandalf. And on that surprising show of actual respect between us, it's time to end. Thanks very much for watching, I am Automatitan, and remember... Oh god, what have you done? It's going to be one of those years.